The origin story behind CG Society is filled with a lot of controversies and drama, which all began in the early 2000s, in an era that is considered by many the golden age of the internet. However, the background behind how this website was founded is covered with its fair share of mysteries. Let me explain. Before we continue, if you want to learn animation in Blender, one of the best places to start is the 2Animate Animation Course. If you are a beginner, you don't have to worry about it, because the course is divided into beginner, intermediate, and advanced levels, so you can take away the best knowledge for your current level and learn at the pace that you are comfortable with. You will learn how to create amazing animation shots that help you stand out with 70 plus animation lessons updated on a continual basis in addition to dialogue clips, feature quality rigs and assets, community access, and technical assistance. So if you are interested, you will find the necessary links in the description. In our story, we have two sides clashing with each other. On one side, we have Jean Eric Honnold, the founder of CGChannel.com, which was launched in August of 2000 and later became one of the most recognized news sites in the computer graphics industry. On the other side, we have five core editorial team members of CG Talk, an online community and forum for digital artists, and the website that later became CG Society. According to a 2002 article on the CG Channel website, Gene Eric Honnold claimed that CG Talk was supposed to be part of CG Channel, but his partner had bought the domain under his name and left when it became one of the hottest destinations in the industry. But the core editorial team behind CG Talk had a different perspective about it. Just like one of them stated following the release of that CG Channel article, CG Channel is a CG Network's website. We have nothing to do with CG Channel. But there is a misconception because all the staff from CG Networks are ex CG Channel members, and we were responsible for most of the original content that was published on the CG Channel between August of 2001 and July of 2002. The core editorial team, five of us, left CG Channel in July after this agreement with Mr. Hanault over Back Bay. We retained CGTalk.com as collateral and have continued to run and improve this community as our passion and hobby. Now, I'm not in a position to tell you who's right or who's wrong, but one thing will surely take in place is that CG Talk was ready to take over the internet when it comes to the CG industry. Despite this early hardship, the CG Society platform rose to absolute stardom after that. It was a heaven on earth for artists because it hosted a variety of forums that covered the different areas of computer graphics including 2D and 3D art, in addition to animation, visual effects, compositing, and much more. I think it is fair to say that it opened the door for a lot of artists because it allowed professionals and enthusiasts alike to engage in discussions, seek feedback on their work, and share their knowledge with others. This was also a way to direct and connect with experienced professionals, which was able to lead into potential mentorship and career opportunities. The website also offered workshops and tutorials in addition to a portfolio section as well as contests, as it is similar to those of ArtStation today. In their essence, there were competitions around a particular theme, such as space for example. Then artists can showcase their skills by creating artwork based on that particular subject or concept. Another interesting milestone was hosting CG Awards which were given to the most outstanding works in various categories, such as 3D, 2D, animation, visual effects, and other categories. I know what I just mentioned seems really normal these days. I mean, a lot of websites are doing this. However, this was at a time when the internet was still very young, and not common to see a website with all those features. I'm talking about the 2000s after all a time when CG Society truly boomed, which made the platform become the central forum website in the industry. As they say, every beginning has an end, and every end is a new beginning. And in a sense, this is what happened to CG Society. You see, after the 2010s, the internet was no longer the same, and it was the start of a new age of social media, 
because what could have been accessed through a heavy desktop computer cannot be done in an app with a smartphone that could fit in the palm of your hands or just in your pocket. While some people might disagree with this point of view, I would like to believe that social media was a big part of the early decline of the website. Just like how this user on Suji Society forums said, you don't visit forums anymore for help, like in the good old days. At a forum, it can happen that you wait days for a response, and in the worst case, you find trouble instead of help. That's why I think that forums will never again be as big as they were in the 2000s. At the time, they were everything. Another user said, I think where YouTube and social media do the damage is preventing new forums from getting off the ground. So if your forum was made in the last 5 to 6 years, it probably had no chance regardless of how hard you worked. Following that, in 2015, the new beginning of the website took place. After the ownership of Suji Society was changed into a new entity called the Art Society. And about this news at the time, we can read on the Suji Society website this statement. Quote, this change has come about a lot of conversation and collaboration with the new owners. Our industry is changing at a rapid rate, and CG Society is committed to continue to serve the digital art community that has supported us so loyally for over 13 years. Last year, we got to talk with the Art Society and found they offered what we believe CG Society needs to take the community to the next stage." End quote. In a nutshell, the idea was to bring the website to its former glory, but did that really work? Despite all the efforts, the platform couldn't escape its destined downfall. Unfortunately, earlier this month, the CG Society team officially announced the permanent retirement of the platform after a long and heartfelt consideration, which will take place on the 8th of January of 2024. It is an event that is marked with a lot of sadness as we are about to witness the downfall of a major website in the community and the loss of more than two decades worth of knowledge that was constantly dropped on the platform through the years, which I personally still visit from time to time. I think it comes down to how popular social media has gotten and that forum websites are simply not the norm not anymore, especially when we consider that CG Society failed to adapt and capture a new user base. And what made the scenario worse was the creation of a new user interface after the change of the ownership of the website, which failed to capture the attention of its already established user base in addition to the fact that many hated it and went online to express their concern. Following the shutdown of CG Society, I think it is only fair to say that it is the end of an era, and an end of a platform that will be forever in the hearts of many as the go-to CG website. But what could this mean in the bigger picture, and does it mean the death of CG forums? It is actually hard to say, because when we look at websites such as Blender Artists, it is still going very strong. But from the other side of the spectrum, I see a lot of forums on the decline, with social media and portfolio websites increasingly becoming the standard. But as sad as that is, we have to face reality that the way audiences consume content nowadays is different than what it used to be, and it is something that is constantly evolving. What was particularly beneficial about online forums is that they used to have a large number of industry professionals that offer a lot of direct help and feedback for beginners, and I think it is something that was lost with social media, because I think it is not effective as forums. On the other side, what social media and websites like YouTube offer is a lot of free content and learning material for new artists to benefit from. So in a way, it is trading between two different things. And whether you like it or not, it is the current reality that we have to face. As a side note, I would like to mention that this is a very subjective topic and to each person their point of view. So if you disagree with mine and you have a different perspective, let us know in the comment section below. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative, if you did leave a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this, thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.